<clears throat> Check it out, everyone. It's the first ever iPod Classic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nah, mate. <laughs> you idiot. You got it all wrong. That's a sixth generation one, you silly goof. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you own an iPod channel, mate. This is the first one. You know how you can tell? The middle spins, mate. Check that out, eh? So, like, that's why you're totally wrong, mate, eh? Why you should delete your channel or something. I get to utter my favourite Australian phrase. Yeah, nah, mate, nah, mate, nah, mate, yeah, nah. So, you're right. This is a sixth generation. But this is the first guy to be called classic. The iPods before, you know, like, you got the fifth gen. You got the fifth gen. People called it the iPod video. They called the colour screen fourth gens the photo. This was the classic. And for me, the term classic is the old school way of doing things. You know, not bad. I mean, that comes with all the respect that it deserves. When the fifth gen was out, no lie, this was the must have phone at school. I was envious of everyone that had one. Oh, look at this. Oh, delicious camera for delicious one megapixel photos. You ready? Yeah, look at all the buttons. And depending on what you're doing, they do different things. But this is genuinely cool, you ready? Auto selfie cam now. Satisfying. So you can't do that with the new razors. And you hang up on your mate like, yeah, oh shit. <laughs> Uh, so what you can do is you can just gently close it with respect. <laughs> Please forgive the condition of my hands, you know, I was trying to fix the engine mounts on my old motorbike and let's just say the motorbike won. So phones were super complicated and the click wheel was just genius. But the thing was, all these guys have to do is shoot noise out of its hole and show pretty images on its screen. You didn't have to type anything using the click wheel. And you couldn't type anything actually right up until the 5.5 uh, gen. Look, I can't search. You know, what a feature, am I right? You know, these came out in 2007. Uh, you know, Apple did release something else that year. I mean, you know, it was pretty low key launch. The, the iPhone. And so a lot of people were keen to try that out and Apple released the touch. These were on the shelf side by side. And let me tell you, they sold so many of these. I couldn't give a damn, to be honest. I just, I just didn't get it. Apple wasn't selling it like a beefed up iPod because it's this amazing video player with full screen, you know, like it's got Wi-Fi and you can surf the net on it in actually like a totally reasonable way. Uh, instead, they were selling it as like a nerfed iPhone. It was an iPhone without the phone. And it was the right thing to do, honestly, because everyone was all whipped up about the iPhone and to try it. But the thing is, while this inherited all the power of an iPhone, it also took on the disadvantages and it's as plain as this. So this one's got 120 gigs in it. Pretty stout. I mean, that's that's a lot of music, let me tell you. So these are comparable in price. And let me show you, oh no. So to me, the iPod Touch was a very beautiful, I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh, it's so thin and it's actually made the same way. They were really going for the same thing. It's a very beautifully made and engineered, highly capable iPod Nano. That's just, that's just what it was to me. Because, come on, iPhone guys, how long were we stuck at 16 gigs for? We check this out, the original Bend phone, iPhone 6. Man, this has 16 gig storage in it. I can hear all the Android people chuckling behind their Galaxy S3s. That was the big killer for me, was just that the storage was just too small, especially for how expensive it was. You could get these in 32 gigs, but they were literally tied for most expensive iPod you could buy brand new. So if Apple to deem this as classic the old school way of doing things with the click wheel it only took six years i mean they made a lot of progress the middle spins which is super fun because you know it means it's just so old and manky but the problem was that dirt would get in there and it'd get grindy and see the buttons they sit proud of the surface meaning uh, if you lean up against anything it will just start pressing all the buttons and that's actually super annoying so you always gotta make sure you have that hold switch on basically the iphone was the one that took over apple was really struggling to sell these it was only when they announced in 2015 that they were getting rid of them you know you look at the iphone 11 it's got tap to wake raise to wake crazy cameras and connectivity you know the face id and such and that's actually looking really old school now i mean with the new folding phones and you can have content that goes up at a right angle you know what is a classic touchscreen device so it took six years for Apple to call that classic. You know, considering that the iPhone X was where we're basically still are. You know, what was six years before the X? 
The iPhone 5. This is a very poorly example. I'm very sorry. No, it does not work. Look, it's got a dedicated home button. Having a headphone jack was not up for question. Of course it had one. Uh, and the very first iPhone to give us the lightning connector. And I like the lightning connector. <laughs> if you look at the, what a chunk of the 30 was on these modern smartphones. Simple camera arrangement. It's got a flash. That was nice. You know, bringing in the really old guys, you can see the DNA's right there. And this was the very last of the line with the old school looking iOS because after this was the 5S and then we got the Touch ID and then we had slow-mo cameras. Individual parts of the iPhone started doing more stuff. This was when it was just so simple. So what I'm gonna lay down now is a brand new Apple device. Only just got this, ordered 2020. It's got an A10 Fusion chip. It does augmented reality. It's got raised to weight. 100% support for AirPods and AirPod Pros because it runs iOS 13. This is, no lie, a brand new Apple device. Like, <laughs> look at it. This thing is old by today's standards. This is almost six years old. Touch ID. This has Apple Pay, by the way. And look at the size of the screen. I'll tell you why I really wanted this. This is the very first iPod to finally knock the iPod Classic off the top. They made the fifth gen iPod touches and the most you could get was 128, but that doesn't pip the 160 gig classics. It meant if you wanted the biggest music player that was an iPod, you still had to buy like a 12 year old device. This guy has 256 gigs. It's not like a dinky micro SD. This is properly engineered to be a 256 gigabyte iPod. And you want to know the best bit? Because I know, like with iPod collecting, if it's got engraving on it, it's usually worth less. It's not worthless, it's just worth less. Because it's got someone's stupid phone number scratched into it or some like live, laugh, love kind of thing, you know. I know that engravings just kind of take a lot of the value away. I had them scratch the word dingus in it. This is my iPod. I'm not selling this. And I feel I can say with confidence that this is classic because before I bought it, I checked out some reviews and the big complaints were that it's got the small screen there's no touch ID and that literally this design has been left unchanged since 2012 the fifth sixth and seventh gens almost look exactly the same except this doesn't have the little keyring lanyard thing on the bottom which is a bummer I wish I could bring that back but mine does say dingus so that's fine one review was like oh for the money you might as well get a small Android phone and that kind of bugs me because this isn't a phone it's an iPod. You know, a lot of people ask why I still use iPhones. Um, I work self-employed. I work as a musician. I play the drums. Being self-employed means you are always at work. I get gig offers at like 11.30, midnight, whatever, and you gotta be the first to answer. And many times, I am not the first to answer. Working as a musician genuinely is a gigging economy. <laughs> first one gets it. And so my phone is super busy. And so working as a musician, I listen to music so much all the time that usually a lot of us will sit in the car in absolute silence. Meaning that when I actually do wanna listen to music, I really wanna listen to music and it really stinks when some stupid robocaller scam whatever rings your phone and you have to pick it up because I've gotten bookings from international artists who use big long funky looking numbers and then I don't want to listen to music. I found I was listening to music a lot less and what I love most of all is no one can call you on one of these. When I'm listening to music, I am the one who presses pause. No one can reach in and do that. And this is no different. If you just forget that it looks like an old phone, that this is literally my favorite iPod ever. And I quizzed you guys on YouTube community I asked what kind of features would you like to see if Apple made a new iPod classic and yep I use that term classic and um, the big ones were Bluetooth streaming services and a headphone jack let's start with that one end of story you know why this is the classic because this is a brand new Apple device this has full Apple care warranty and it has <laughs> A headphone jack! Ah! It's the only new Apple device that's pocketable that you can get with a headphone jack in it. And look how thin this thing is. My sweet spot for an iPod is 256 gigs. I've got like a 70 something thousand song music library, which I, you know, I work as a musician. I've been collecting a long time, but 256 is good. That's like a good stash of music that I can take with me.
because the big thing about an iPod is that it's an offline device. And I know a lot of you guys aren't in situations where you know, you need an offline device. For instance, I was touring in Queensland off in the mangroves and phone signal was so rare out there that I'm sure you could trade a sandwich for a Snapchat post. It was nuts. And then we realized that we were nowhere near a wall outlet. Our phones were all of a sudden very important because we're out in the jungles of nowhere and we might actually need to call for help. Our phones were getting low on battery and let me tell you, watching Shrek on this, in that moment when we'll kill on four hours of time before it was our turn to sound check, it might as well have been 16 i Maxes combined. This was a savior. <laughs> um, and teaching music in schools, you know, if you're lucky, you get a soundproof room, which is awesome. It sounds really nice in there. But sometimes that just snatches all the phone signal out of the room. Students will have their music exams that they got coming up and they need their play along music to play along with it. <laughs> no kidding. My very last reserve was to have my iPod that had the tunes on here to play, but it was also a Fat32 expandable storage that we could plug into the school computer and they can take the exam music if they absolutely needed to. And I had to call upon this strategy twice. And let me tell you, when you got year 12s hoping to go into uni and it's their final music exam, this thing was just, and to call it a classic is a big bold claim. And to stamp this point home, put it up against the darling, the fifth gen, you know, as a music player, Go get them. You watch this. How fast this thing shuffles music. Boom. And you can check out what's coming up next. This is so good. And look, you can actually move them around. You're like, no, I don't want that one yet. Oh, uh, let's... Uh, uh. And walking around outside, it's so hard to see these color displays when the sun hits them. These guys on full crank, you can see them just fine. Hey, Shrek ain't bad. I mean, it's a bit dim. Can we brighten it up? Yeah, that's as bright as she goes. I don't know about you, but... That's actually a really good size screen for just watching stuff on. And the chin and the bezel are actually really good for holding, you know, new phones you can't touch anywhere, everywhere's a screen. But this is just like this. This thing syncs to my 2007 iMac. It's so cool to have this guy and this guy syncing the exact same libraries. Th that's support if you ask me. A 2007 iMac still talking to current devices. This thing has iOS 13 on it. So of course it's got Spotify, Apple Music, Oh man, you know, Bandcamp, SoundCloud. And you think, well, what's the big deal? As soon as you leave the Wi-Fi, that's it. You can't use them anymore. <laughs> but here's how that storage is awesome. You can just download straight to it. You can take all of your Spotify music with you offline. And sound quality wise, I think it sounds great. And the fact that this has Bluetooth, it'll talk to the sexy speaker perfectly. Power on, Bluetooth mode. Oh yeah. You know, you don't have to mod it like this one. <laughs> one thing that people said that they really didn't want was iOS. You know, I can understand, you know, if you're using iOS on your phone, that's a little bit different because your phone runs a really important part of your life. But let me tell you, as software for an iPod, iOS is amazing. Like for instance, people are like, oh yeah, it'd be good if it had like the fun little games in there. Look out, here comes phallic gun. That looks like something I can't describe. Use your imagination. Or brick. Go! Action! Action! Truthfully, this actually controls pretty terrible. It's it, for the time, it was genius. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just playing Voice City on my iPod. It runs great. This thing is so overpowered for what it is. Jump, man, jump! Yeah, get it. Sure, you maybe you don't want to play the entire game on this, but if you're killing time and a game of brick was tempting, I'm pretty sure screwing around on Vice City for half an hour will totally suffice. If you're just wanting to kill time and be done like Happy Wheels on your iPod? This is genius! <laughs> go, Dad, go! Well, we all lost the kid. I have Roller Coaster Tycoon on my iPod! I'm, I'm serious. In terms of being a time killer, it is amazing. It's got Garage Band. And like iMovie and such, like these are genuinely super fun apps. It's got a dingus camera in it that does 1080. You could make movies on this and even make all the music all in built onto this. I need to do that one day actually, that's totally my jam. But the big one for me is, I bought these for the Bluetooth iPod video and I was pretty bummed when it didn't work because I didn't really want a pair of these. I knew you guys would want to see if the pros work, not the standard AirPods, so I actually sold my Apple Watch to get these um, and yeah, it didn't work too good. Uh, fun tip, if you want a genuine iPod that works with AirPod Pros, get a 7th Gen Nano. They work perfectly, it pairs up, all that good stuff. But this is better than that. 
this does the full sync. You know, so I gave a few reasons why an offline device is handy. It could be a big plane journey. You could be going out camping in the middle of nowhere and just having this little pocketable video player. But I know a few of you guys are going like 256 gigs, you know, big deal. You made the one terabyte iPod and that was smash all over this. Uh, you know, never minding how slow and unreliable this can be at times, especially when you load them up right to the brim. But what I want to do is show you just how much 256 gigs really is. I have 20 and a half thousand songs on the device. And just to give you a vibe on how much that is. <laughs> We're up to C, still going. Look how far we've got to go. You know, you get it. You know, I showed the same thing in the last video. I love pressing that home button, by the way. So you go, oh, that's super cool, man. That means you're all full of music then. Uh, no. Look, VLC. What are all these? <gasps> these are my flax. That's right. When I said, what kind of iPod classic would you want? People said, man, it should be able to do flax. This can play flax. Being able to play flax out of my AKGs. Yeah, straight out of this with the peace and quiet of knowing that no one's gonna freaking call me. So I've got about 250 flax in here. Oh, and by the way, you can just airdrop videos straight into this and straight into VLC player without using iTunes. So you're thinking, all right, well, that's it. That's your 256 gigs then, right? That's a lot of flax. No, I've got about 200 songs downloaded in Spotify. I have 226 videos downloaded off YouTube. Oh, let's just mosey into Disney Plus here. Uh, 12 episodes of The Simpsons, every episode of The Mandalorian. We've got all the Star Wars on there and you know Aladdin just for good measure really so surely you think it's full by now nah oh look my neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away and the whole first season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and every single episode of Disenchanted and Pokemon Detective just for good measure really surely it's full by now this is also including all these games I have Goat Simulator on this it loads so fast I mean again if you thought like playing brick on an iPod was a fun time killer while listening to music don't get me started on freaking Goat Simulator, Vice City, you know, Rollercoaster Tycoon, you can get Civ 6 on this. It'll play Fortnite, you know, and that's including, it's even got Garage Band, iMovie. Are you impressed with how much, you know, that's on top of the 20 something thousand songs on this thing and all the flax. And yes, you can see that this is on the internet. So I've turned off the internet just to prove to you. Completely offline. I can't play more than that. Otherwise, Disney will come and kill me. Do you want to know the real punchline to all this? I still have 51 gigs left. The thickest fifth gen iPod you could get was 60 gigs. And I only have one of them left over is spare. Look how thin this thing is. Getting into a big topic that people brought up. They want a high quality DAC in it, which is, you know, the, the thing that makes the music. I think it sounds fine coming out of them. These, honestly, I love how these sound. These are powered headphones, but I get it. You know, you want something something extra. I don't know if you've heard of Fio. They make flak players. Look at this. It looks like an iPod. That's why I have it. It's got a spinning gear. This will get a video at some point. You know, micro SD plays flax, but they cut their teeth making portable amplifiers. And they have come out with the i1 lightning connector in. Not only do you have volume adjustment and a microphone, by the way, so that way you're listening with your lovely audiophile headphones and you can still take phone calls. You know, this is if you're using it in your smartphone. I don't want any of that. But this is a DAC. It's got a chip in there and let me tell you, it sounds better. But keep in mind, this is an accessory on top of already nice headphones. You are not gonna pick up the differences, you know, rocking a set of dirty buds like this. And those of us who like to use your phones, you know, for Spotify and all sort of stuff, there you go. You get your headphone jack back, but bonus, you get a DAC as well. It does shorten battery life a little bit. It's, it's worth it. I really love this thing. Something else someone said was they'd like to see more accessibility options, you know, so if their eyesight isn't so good, they they can make the text different or, you know, different swipe gestures and such. The amount of stuff that you can adjust is amazing. The text size, the magnifier, you can make the motion go away. If you find all the, the swishy graphics very, you know, kind of distracting, you can have it describe things automatically. You can ask the home button to do specific things. You can use it as a remote for the Apple TV. You can beam videos to like a PS4 or a smart telly. This is the remote in my house, by the way. And when mates come over to laugh at YouTube videos, I just pass this around and you can just type in the YouTube 
YouTube video, find the thumbnail and send it to the TV. I friggin love this iPod. <laughs> you can set this thing up exactly how you want to be. So as I said, I like to have the privacy of that no one's gonna message me on my content player. So it's set up to have no iMessage, no email. Look down in the dock, it's just Spotify and Apple Music. A little thing that people ask for, it's a really small detail, but a speaker. I wouldn't wanna listen to music through it or really, <laughs> oh, any good iPod needs to have a dock and this is no exception. Apple makes one. Oh, it's even in matching gold. And kudos to Apple. You know, you can get this in blue, pink, red. I pick gold because I'm gonna bear back this baby and I wanna see the silver wear through the gold. It almost looks eerie the way it just hangs in there. It's got headphone out, so couple USB adapters, so you got everything being charged at all times. This little setup with these headphones on a desk, look at that tiny footprint. This is an awesome study desk setup, whatever you call it. Oh, look, they held. And to address the elephant in the room, so many of you guys wanted to keep the click wheel. And that saddens me, because that means you didn't watch my Wikipedia episode where I tried to write the word president. It took so long. And maybe brick and phallic gun are fun with the click wheel. Yeah, that means you didn't watch me try and play Doom with the click wheel. It stinks. And take it from the owner of an iPod YouTube channel. I love the click wheel. When it's within its comfort zone, as soon as you're outside of it, it just doesn't work anymore. And the last thing to discuss is the price. 400 US bucks for a 256 gig iPod touch. And to me, that was $600 reduced. That's a lot of money. I really had to stop and think about it. Using the Wayback Machine, looking at 2003, the 40 gig third gen iPod was over a thousand dollar reduced. Not even adjusting for inflation or any that sort of stuff. What other 256 gig iOS devices Apple make? Well, the next cheapest is an iPad mini. I think the next one after that is an iPhone 11. And that's the only way to get 256 gig storage on iOS. And I know you're all rolling your eyes in the back of your head fast and you can say, yibbity, yibbity, yibbity. The fact that I'm comparing other Apple products in pricing to this, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Uh, and annoyingly, that's how all iPods have always been. You know, this screen is awesome. It's way better than an iPod needs to be. And I love the small size. It's the perfect one-handed device just to go like this. It's 100% totally up to date. You can sync it with the same library as a first gen. Using iOS is endlessly expandable. You can load it up with all your favorite movies and songs from your favorite streaming services to play offline later. It is ridiculously thin and light and it is super well built. This thing is super nice. And like a true Apple product, there's gonna be bunches of you saying, hey, I really like that. I want one of them. And a whole pile of you going, I absolutely friggin' hate it. I can't believe this thing even exists. Oh, one more thing. Um, I got sponsored. <laughs> well, I'm actually absolutely blown away. Um, and it's actually a huge help. Yeah, you know, I work as an entertainer and you know, with all the stuff going on worldwide, uh, you know, no one's putting on gigs or weddings or anything anymore. You know, so they have a sponsor jump in and want to be partnered up. The theme of this episode was privacy. The fact that no one can call you on a Dungus iPod. And the sponsor is ExpressVPN. As an Aussie, you know, like there's so much content that is not available to us. One of my favorite auto networks has V8 supercars on it, which is the Aussie racing series back when it was fun before we stopped making cars and for some reason it is not available in my country <laughs> an Australian thing not available in my country man we're warm to VPNs down here because that allows us to watch this stuff because usually we're paying the same price as you guys but then we get this nerfed experience because some jerk owns all the content and doesn't want to hand it out to us and a VPN is a bit like having a lock on your bedroom doesn't mean you're doing weird stuff in there but, you know it's just nice to have your privacy <laughs> we're totally doing weird stuff in there <laughs> but because this runs iOS, it has a VPN. <laughs> oh man, there's nothing more fun that to use this offline and have a private device, but even when I'm connected, it's still a private device. Express VPN sit in the middle, you know, so it's coming out of Adelaide, but the signal seems like it's coming from Sydney. You know, it's private, you know, people can't see what you're up to. I think Facebook's kind of showing us how little they care for our personal data. If you sign up for 12 months, they'll give you three months for free. Three months of private Shrek memes. I mean, do we dare to dance so close to the sun? And if you're worried about the overheads of a VPN slowing down your daily interneting, you got 30 day money back guarantee. I mean, this is your chance to go and try out a VPN and see if it's right for you. ExpressVPN.com forward slash Dagpods, links down below. Even just clicking and looking around, you'll be helping me out. So thank you so much, Express, and thank you guys. I know the world's nuts at the moment, but stay safe and I'll see you all next time.